Hello and welcome to Sports Update on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Let's begin from a sport different from football. All of them are ball, ball, ball. We have the foot and now we have the hand. So let's start with handball on the show this evening. The Handball Federation has finally given date, uh, confirmed the date for the second phase of the Adova uh, League. That is for the men and women. So it's going to be coming up by next month. We have 12 men's club and 10 women's club who are expected to feature in the second phase of the uh, Dover Handball League. It's going to run from the 13th to 26th of November 2023 at the Indoor Sports Hall of National Stadium Surilere, Lagos. That is a fantastic one. And then they are going to be using two centers, though. The second center will be at the Rowe Park, uh, Rowe Park uh, Sports uh, Center at Yaba, uh, Lagos, precisely. So this, uh, one of the centers will be for the men, and then the second center will be for the women. 12 men's team and 10 women's uh, team. That's for the Adova Handball League second phase. And let's not forget that uh, in the men's uh, league, uh, the, the, the safety shooters are second. Niger United is leading the table uh, with 30 points. Safety shooters is second with 28 points. While Toje Marine Academy of Lagos is third on 27 points. And then in the women's uh, uh, in the women's side, in the women's category, safety babes of Abuja leads with 27 points followed by DD defenders of Abuja also with 24 points while the third place is the Riman Queens of Sokoto with 22 points so it's going to run from the 13th to the 26th of November 2023 at the two centers right there in Lagos one at the national one center at the national stadium Surilere and then the second is at the Rowe Sports Center in Yaba so uh, a fantastic one from the Handball Federation of Nigeria, led by Sam Ochaho. They have been doing well. The second phase of the Adova League will be going up, and then we are going to have the champions of the champions of the league. Niger United, Toji Marine, Safety Babes, DD Defenders of Abuja, Rima Queens, all of these teams will be slugging it out right there. Ten women's team, 12 men's team to who is going to be the champion for the men's handball league or for the women's handball league 2023? I think the Handball Federation of Nigeria has been doing a fantastic job putting up this league together. And then sometimes ago, we have the Prudent Energy so, uh, sponsoring the league. And now we have the Adova Handball League, another sponsor for the league. Good one. And they have been branding what is called handball in Nigeria. Because of uh, some, we've, we've gotten some good fortunes in the handball world in Nigeria, in handball sports in Nigeria. All right, uh, we have uh, Ayola all the way from Benin City uh, joining us on the show this evening. Ayola, welcome to the show. Quickly, uh, the first story, handball, uh, the, the league is going to continue the second phase and we have, uh, uh, it's painful that we don't have uh, any team from uh, <laughs> from Benin this time <laughs> there. But uh, we're, uh, topping the table, I beg your pardon, we don't have any team among the teams topping the men's side and the women's side from Benin right there. But good one that the league, uh, the second phase will be coming up in Lagos. That is by next month. Yeah, and it's a very good one uh, for me so far in the world of the handball and the country. And we can see that uh, the, the plan, the, the approaches so far, and the different programs they put up uh, in, in many ways at the field. Uh, we saw that they are under 18 and getting to win some uh, important uh, you know, company as well as uh, booking their place in the in the World Cup. So it's a very good one, and they're coming the second phase of their league. Another good one for them. Um, yeah, it's a long way in keeping the team. Very well. Um, other people uh, want to uh, come and eat a lot of animal in the country. Nothing to be had on. Ocheho definitely is trying. We must commend him for that. Yes, Ocheho has been doing very well and you must commend them. Now, in the, in the 90s, uh, uh, towards the late 90s, Handball used to be a very, uh, it's a sport that was um, alongside football. 
I, I watched some of those handball competitions back then in the 90s. I, I could still remember we had some of those competitions in, at the Samuel Obundia Stadium in Bini City where I had to watch some. The last time I would even won any continental title was in 1992. That is the under-21 women. Uh, so far, um, uh, how will you rate uh, the growth, let me say the comeback of handball in Nigeria, not just the league alone? Yeah, I'm um, talking about the comeback of handball in the country and um, so far. You want to give kudos to those who are uh, talking about uh, so who are, uh, uh, you know, uh, the man in charge. Uh, that is why we keep saying that when you put a um, round O in round a page or square O in square, square definitely you will really enjoy what will be coming out of it. And we will come up with a book that has already said, very, very long, 1992, in the 90s, just won any uh, tournament, and this time around, uh, we are doing fine. You know, that is a very great work that we must commend, and um, no doubt about it. And uh, over time, uh, I'll be giving them seven. Okay. Now, uh, you are in Benin. Uh, I, I don't know, how far has been handball? Uh, at some point, uh, we don't, uh, what has been happening to handball sports in Benin City? Hello. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, I said you are in Benin. Handball has been a very uh, interesting sport uh, in Benin, but for some times um, it has not really um, been up and running. What has been happening to handball sports in Benin City and Edo State in general? Um, I, I think uh, for, for, for handball in Benin, it has not been uh, dead, as we already said, and up and running. I can assure you that we want. Um, there are full of um, tournaments hosted in Benin City. And um, in support of uh, the sports community, the um, and golf education, and then um, they participated in it as well. Uh, we call the uh, the the league the uh, follows. They call them now, but I can tell you that um, the revival for handball, is, you know, is is is, is definitely so. It will not have gotten to the top level that I expected. But the last tournament that they had in the league, I think um, uh, they, they did not too badly in the tournament uh, to some extent. The place in the quarterfinals, if I'm not wrong. So, um, it's just gradual. As we are in, you know, I'm even in the country as a whole, uh, we are just coming on track and for being precisely. We have the core of the, uh, uh, the, the country environment to function only for time come out for them and for them to blend well into the team. Okay. Uh, I do Dynamos got relegated. What are they doing to come back? <laughs> um, I know that I was uh, got relegated by that one, but um, it, it, um, if you it, if you recall for the film as well, they got relegated at some point in time, and uh, with hard work, investment, and other things, they came up. And now that they know that um, handball is coming a big thing in Nigeria, and they know that it is what you can now trust in investing, and very sure that um, there will be more plans in, in, in top game to make sure that um, they are more active. Okay, uh, plans in top gear to make sure that Edo Dynamos is back to the league, and that is what we want to see. Uh, since we have you in Benin, Edo Dynamos should just hurry up and come back to the league. Okay, let's leave that story and go straight to the Olympics, where um, right now the World Squash Federation president, Woodridge, has actually commended the IOC, that is the International Olympic Committee, for including squash. In the next in the 2028 Olympics, and he commended uh, the IOC body for making sure that uh, these sports uh, uh, joins uh, or to, uh, to be showcased at the Olympics. What's your take about that? And we know that squash is also an interesting sport in Nigeria. The last time out, I know at the National Youth Games, uh, there was squash competition, even at the uh, National Sports Festival. And the last uh, uh, youth games in Ilorin and then the one in Asaba also has squash sports. So if, uh, what's your take now that the, okay, 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 we lost uh, Ayola right there. Uh, if he joins us, he's going to tell us. And for the uh, World Squash Federation's president, Woodridge has actually commended the IOC for including squash into the sports that will be showcased at the Los Angeles Olympics 
2028 and it's a good one that the uh, IOC wants to expand the Olympics, wants to bring in other sports. We also want to see uh, what is called the netball uh, in the Olympics. I, I pray alongside some of these sports will be integrated into the Olympics. We have a lot of uh, sports uh, that are not yet in the Olympics and we even have our own uh, uh, traditional sports. We want to see all these sports, the likes of Abula, the likes of Ayo, the likes of Gra. If we see these sports at the Olympics, we will be very happy. So it's a good one. And now if they say they want to include Abula, in Olympic uh, sports, it is going to be a good one for Nigeria. The game, like the, the game of Ayo, also, if they include the game of Ayo, we know that we have one sport that will be showcased at the Olympics. So it's a good one that squash, not just squash alone. We also have a softball, we have cricket. Now, cricket also will be part of the sports that will be showcased at the 2028 Olympics. Cricket, squash, softball. These are a lot of sports. That will be showcased at the 2028 Olympics, which will be going down in Los Angeles. So good one from the IOC and good one that uh, the World Squash Federation President Zena Woodridge is actually commending the IOC body for including all of these sports to be showcased at the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. And if you ask me where's Los Angeles, Los Angeles is in America. They call them LA. So <laughs> when it's 2028, and then we, we, we just pray that we have a Nigerian representative uh, right there at the squash event in 2028 Olympics and also the cricket. Okay, let's leave uh, that story and go straight uh, to talk some uh, injury worries for the Super Eagles players. This time around, another player for the Super Eagles. The good news is that he will be back before the Nations Cup. Samuel Chukweze will be out for four good weeks. That is a month. He will be back at the end of uh, November. So, uh, and you know, it's just uh, a mo two months to uh, a month in between the Nations Cup. The Nations Cup will be starting January 13th to end in February. So, before then, at least, he's going to come back uh, before the Nations Cup. And for Samuel Chukweze, from Sports Update, Trust TV, we wish you quick recovery so that you can join up and come back to the team fully and join the Super Eagles team. And uh, it's a good one that, uh, well, uh, that we'll be having him back before then. So we wish you quick recovery from that uh, injury. Uh, you know you pick up that injury in the game uh, against uh, Saudi Arabia. So we know what happens uh, in that game. So for Samuel Chukweze, he has not been finding life. He has not started well for the Rosaneri, that's AC Milan uh, in Italy, where he's playing his trade right now. But uh, let's see if he comes back from that injury, if he can find his way back into the team. He was the best African player in La Liga last season before he left for AC Milan this time around. So quick recovery to Samuel Chukweze from that uh, injury. Okay, let's take uh, this transfer story now. It consigns, it's all about Nigerian players on the show this evening. Uh, it consigns another fantastic victor, Victor Boniface. Now, Newcastle, they have the Arab money working for them. They are keen on uh, buying Bayer Leverkusen, Victor Boniface, a player who just won the rookie uh, player of the month award for the second time running. He won that of the August. He has won the, 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 that of September. Probably he might have made it hat trick of rookie award winning in this month of October. He must have won seven games, seven goals for Victor Boniface. So, and he has been fantastic for Bayer Leverkusen. And that is why now Eddie uh, Howey of uh, Newcastle and his team and his scouts want to see Victor Boniface come to Newcastle. And we know Newcastle is playing in Europe with Victor Boniface leave Bayer Leverkusen by January. Then he will be with Nigeria in the Nations Cup. Probably I know he's, he will be on that plane of the Spy Ghost team that will be going to the Nations Cup. So for Newcastle United, they are, they are keen on uh, Victor Boniface. I don't know if Ayola is back and ready for us. Let's, let's have him. Okay, uh, he's not ready yet. Let, let's take this uh, transfer story also on the show. We have uh, Bayern Munich now wants uh, Socrates. He's a Greek uh, player, Socrates. He was formerly of Arsenal player, Arsenal Noli. He's a fantastic uh, defender, Socratic 
Papastopoulos, as he is called from Greece. Uh, he, uh, now Bayern Munich are looking to uh, at least b b sign this guy in January to at least ease their injury worries. We know the back line of Pamenko and the rest of them, they are out injured. And now Bayern Munich wants to use uh, this, they want to use him as a replacement, at least uh, to show up for the main time for their injury worries. Socrates Papastopoulos, if you remember, he was an Arsenal player. Uh, if you remember Socrates then in, in the colors of Arsenal. He's a good player. We have about two Greek players that actually played for Arsenal, Papadopoulos. Socrates also coming. Uh, now Bayern Munich wants to sign him to at least ease their injury worries. So for Socrates, well, if he makes that move to Bayern, it's going to be a good one. Bayern Munich you know, you, 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 you know, they are very, they are a big team in uh, the German Bundesliga. They are uh, perennial champions of the Bundesliga. So for Socrates, let's see if he's going to make that move in January to Bayern Munich. Okay, let's uh, quickly take this story on the show. This concerns uh, Thiago Silva of Chelsea. Now, <laughs> he's the oldest player in, by age. In Chelsea, when we say who's the oldest player by age in Chelsea, but the oldest player to be in Chelsea color is uh, uh, Chaloba. That's the oldest player for Chelsea because he came from the ranks from the academy. So right now for uh, Thiago Silva, he eyes a Fluminense return. And we know Fluminense is in Brazil. He wants to go back home. A lot of these uh, Brazilian players, when they have, uh, when they apply their trade in Europe, at the end of the day, they always want to go back home, at least have, at least play maybe one or two years for their boyhood club in their league. The likes of Ronaldinho went back, the likes of Ronaldo Delima went back uh, to Brazil to play the league. A lot of them, Kaka doing the same. A lot of Brazilian players, whenever they finish their sojourn, let me say most of the South American players, not, not just uh, Brazilian players alone, once they finish up, once they finish playing at least spend some quite some time in europe all they normally do is to go back home and join up with their boyhood club or join some of their home uh, clubs and that is what uh, uh, Thiago Silva of Chelsea is looking at now he's eyeing a return to Fluminense of Brazil good one for Thiago Silva fantastic player good defender uh, quiet rugged on the pitch whenever he's so serious whenever he's playing you see that sign of seriousness with him he's a great leader and if he goes back to Fluminense it's going to be a good one for uh, Thiago Silva of Chelsea okay that is where we'll leave it on the show sports update this evening I beg you that uh, Ayola couldn't join us uh, on the show because we're having some audio issues uh, okay that is where we'll leave it on sports update thanks for watching I am Emmanuel Fashimi.